Karen Hodgins, Creative Nifty Numbers, Math Medley, and Joan with Geometry Family Math Night Kits. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my latest Family Math Night collaborative project, Space Invaders. And you can see behind me the result of um, one of our fabulous Space Invaders that we made at my last event. Super fun. So if you're not familiar with Space Invaders, Space Invaders um, was a video arcade game that came out in 1978. It was um, developed by a, a Japanese um, video game designer. Um, it had, um, uh, at, the, at the top of your computer screen, you'd have a whole bunch of little um, space invaders and they would come down and your job was to eliminate them before they got to the bottom. And of course there were points involved in different levels and so forth. Um, it was hugely popular um, and it really helped catapult video gaming into the global industry um, that it is um, today. Now back in the day, the um, computer graphics were not quite as sophisticated as they are today. Um, in fact, um, they looked really, really boxy. And we're gonna take advantage of that boxy look by creating our space invaders. So a little bit of background. Um, the images in computer graphics are made up of these little things called pixels. And pixels are these teeny tiny squares of one color. And they're arranged on a um, rectangular matrix um, that has a horizontal axis and a vertical axis, and it's actually called a bitmap. So you could kind of, I kind of recreated a bitmap, if you will, here. You can see my horizontal axis and my vertical axis. And each one of these little cubes represents a pixel. Um, now, Technically, these aren't really pixels because a pix pixel is um, one color, um, but I didn't think it was gonna be too exciting to have the kids just color in a square um, and put it up here. I wanted them to be creative. And so um, they were allowed to create, to color in their particular pixel um, any way that they wanted. So I kind of fudged a little bit. Um, but I think that we're gonna let that slide. Um, so, okay, so that's a little bit of background on um, computer graphics. What I'm gonna do next is go over the, uh, the actual activity with you, and I'm gonna weave in some of the math while I'm doing that. Everything that I talk about in, and share in this video is in the written lesson plan, um, in case you wanna have a physical copy of that. Okay, so, um, First, uh, when I set up these collaborative projects at my Family Math Night events, I spread out all the, the materials on a large table, they're cafeteria tables, and I also um, level those, those um, I level the tables, beginning, intermediate, and advanced, and I have table tents um, to denote which one is which. And these table tents are in the written lesson plans. So the beginning is kind of like kindergarten, first grade. The intermediate is like second and third grade. And the advanced is fourth grade and up. Okay. Um, and then I spread out all the materials and uh, which are so, and those are um, straight edges. And what I use for straight edges are these craft sticks, but you can use uh, rulers and you're going to need to spread out some uh, pencils and some ballpoint pens, and it's really important that they're ballpoint pens. We'll talk about that again in a second. We need a whole bunch of tape dispensers, tons of super fun um, colors, Sharpie pens. I like Sharpies, but any kind of um, colorful pens would work. Um, and then you're gonna have an option of um, at the, uh, one of the activities at the advanced level um, to put out some of these inch cubes. That is an option. Again, we'll talk about that. Um, in the lesson plan, I have letters for you that spell out space invaders. So at my event, I had space invaders on the wall, and then I had this um, underneath that. So if you want to print these out, you can. And then you're going to need um, the table tents. So there are, um, okay, you can print out, I think I had six of these table tents spread out across uh, the table, and these are the directions um, that uh, the participants are gonna use. Um, and you're gonna need the activity sheets 
So remember we've got beginning, intermediate, and advanced. You're gonna have um, beginning level activity sheet, intermediate activity sheets, and then obviously the advanced activity sheets. And when you run these off, um, it's important that you run them off on, you hear that, um, cardstock or tag board. Um, it's easier for them to turn this into um, a cube when they get to that part. And I wanna talk about the um, advanced activity for just a second because you actually have a choice of two different activities at the advanced level. Um, you can do the activity where the net, this is the net here, it's a two-dimensional representation of what they're going to turn into a cube. So you can do the activity at the advanced level where the net is already on the activity sheet, or you can choose to have students, see this is just an um, inch uh, graph paper, they can actually create their own net. Okay. Um, and uh, the directions, whoops, upside down, the directions tell them um, what kind of a net to create. It is at a higher level, um, but some kids are ready for that challenge, and if they are, then this is the activity um, for them. Because there's two different um, activities, possible activities at the advanced level, there's two different table tents, depending on which one you choose. Okay. Um, one table tent works with the activity sheet with the net already created. And the second table tent um, is for uh, the uh, activity at the advanced level where they actually create their own net, okay? So that's why there's two of those. Okay, so what else are you gonna need? You're going to need the, um, the uh, collaborative project um, coordinate coordinates, okay? So um, each, a one of the space invaders, and there are three of them, I'm going to show them with you, but there are three of them, have their own set of coordinates, obviously, right? Um, and this is the set of coordinates that goes with um, this uh, space invader. And what I did is I hung this up on the wall right next to this with a pen. Oops, okay, so the yarn came off, but it was attached to the pen, and it was hanging on the wall so that as participants chose a coordinate to plot, they could cross it off, and that way we knew which ones um, we still needed to have, and so forth. I had two station facilitators running this station. One station facilitator was running just the table, um, and the other station facilitator was stationed right next to um, the, the grid. And what they were doing is making sure that participants were um, putting, uh, plotting their points correctly and, um, and then making sure that it was crossed off um, when they were done. Okay, so I mentioned that there were three uh, space invaders. Um, this is one of them, that's this little guy right here. Okay, and here's the second one. Okay. Super cute, huh? And then here is the third one. You can decide which one you want to do. And the reason why I chose um, these three was because um, uh, if, of the size of your group. If you have a, you know, a normal size of your family map, then like this one might work for you. If you have a really large group, you might want to choose this one or this one right here. And then if you have um, a smaller group, then you're going to go with um, this, uh, this guy right here. If you have a tremendous turnout, you can do more than one. That would be super fun. Okay, then you're going to need to create the, um, the grid or um, what's called the, um, the bitmap, actually. Um, so again, it has a horizontal and a vertical axis. Now, it was really important to me that I keep um, the, the math um, correct, <laughs> obviously. And when you're plotting points, um, you plot points at the intersection of the horizontal and the vertical axes. And I wanted to make sure that that's what we were doing here. So when you create your grid, I kind of designed this to make it a little bit easier for you to see. I buy this graph paper at an office supply store. It comes in these pads, and I think there's either 50 or 100 in a pad. Um, and they're inch squares, and the squares 
And the grids are made up of, the, of these blue lines. I don't know if you can see the blue lines back here. I went over in permanent marker, you can see the black lines. And I did that deliberately because I wanted the students to know exactly where their cube went um, when they plotted it because it needs to be perfect in order for this to turn out correctly and not lopsided. Um, so that's why I drew those lines, but they're plotting their points at the intersection of the, the blue lines. So to show you what I did as an example, here's, here's an example here. So you can see that these blue lines here, okay, if I wanted to plot um, the, the point, say two, three, then I would go over two, and then up three, and you can see that I would be plotting it right there, right? The intersection of those lines, even though this is um, bolded in, in black. That's where their cube is going to go to keep it nice um, and perfect. And I just want to mention this because I talked about having the math be correct. We always start um, plotting our coordinates at the origin, which is zero, right? So technically, this is not really zero. Zero would actually be one over right here, and that would be zero. Um, but I didn't want to confuse this. I wanted to keep it kind of clean looking, so um, I, didn't, um, I didn't include that on here just for the purpose of this activity, but I just thought I would mention that. Okay, so you've created all your grids, you've got all of your materials, you're ready to go. I'm just going to read to you what it says on the table tent, um, and then we're going to talk about um, the other activities um, on the activity sheet. So, this is the Space Invaders Collaborative Project, and it says here, Space Invaders is a video arcade game that was released in 1978. The pixelated aliens in the game became a popular icon. This collaborative project recreates some of the alien characters in three-dimensional form using cubes on a coordinate grid. Okay, so there's a couple things that I want to talk about before I get to the rest of the directions. And that is the word pixelated on here has an asterisk. And at the bottom it says pixel, small single colored squares that make up images in computer graphics, in case they didn't know what that meant. The second thing I want to talk about is um, three-dimensional. So obviously, computer graphics, right, the images on a computer, they're not three dimensions. Sometimes they look like they're three dimensions, but they're not. They've got length and width. We are creating, um, obviously, three dimensions. Our cubes are going to have length, width, and height. Okay, so there's going to be um, the three dimensions in there. Um, and then a coordinate grid, and we kind of talked about the coordinate grid, the x-axis and the y-axis, and this is kind of our, our, our bitmap, okay, um, for the project. Okay, so now the directions. Choose one of the activity levels, beginning, intermediate, or advanced, and then it goes on to say, um, answer the questions, follow the, the directions to create your cube, and that's where I'm going to get into the beginning level. So here is the beginning level um, activity sheet. And the first thing they want to do is they want to answer um, these questions on here. They want to do that at the beginning and the intermediate level first because it's easier to answer the questions before you cut this whole thing out and turn it into a cube. So at the beginning level, the first thinking question says, how many total squares do you see in this net? of a cube. So remember earlier I said a net is the two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object and if I didn't mention that um, I'm mentioning it now um, but there's a little definition um, at the bottom that also says that in case they don't know what a net is. So the first thing is how many squares do you see? So they get to talk about squares and um, maybe some attributes of the squares and count the squares. Counting is always good. And then the second one says how many squares have tabs? Now they're doing this with um, their parent or an adult so hopefully the parent or adult knows that these little um, trapezoidal uh, um, it, uh, shapes there are the tabs. So then they can count how many squares have tabs. And the next question is how many squares do not have tabs? And then there's a challenge question. Okay. Um, can you create an equation for the questions two and three above showing how many total squares there are that it says blank plus blank equals? So here they would do, um, Three squares with tabs, three squares without tabs equals six total squares. Okay, and then the rest of the directions say, well, let me read. Um, 
Okay, color in one of the squares. So they just can, any square that they want, they can color any one that they want. Um, feel free to create, to create designs. Cut along the perimeter, so now we're sneaking in some more math vocabulary, right? Of the net, then score the lines with a straight edge and a ballpoint pen. So remember earlier when I said that ballpoint pen was really important? It is, because they're gonna use the straight edge and the ballpoint pen, and after this is cut out, okay, it'll look like this, they're going to score all of those lines there. Okay? And they're gonna score them because it makes it so much easier to turn this into um, their cube when those lines are scored, okay? They fold so beautifully right on those lines. So um, that's why you want to have the ballpoint pens. Okay, then it says, um, tuck the tabs inside and tape the edges. Okay, those real little guys are gonna need help from, um, from their parent or their adult to help tape those edges. And then it says, use the post-it coordinates to add your cube to the collaborative Space Invaders, make, making sure the colored, uh, the colored section faces out. So that part's really important, right? Because you're gonna end up with a cube that only has one of the squares colored in. That's the one that you want facing up. And to show you, I haven't quite put this one, uh, taped this one on there yet, but you can see, um, this was actually done, I don't know how well you can see that, but my husband did that one. He happens to be a software engineer, so that may make sense to you. Um, but you can see then that there's a blank on the other side. So you want this part to hang out, to stick out. And then they just find one of those coordinates on there. And then they, they um, figure that out where it is on here. And then they tape it on. And I actually, this one's not taped, as you can see. But we actually rolled up tape and we would put it on the coordinate and they would stick their little cube on there. Okay, so that's the beginning activity. The intermediate, okay, their questions are, so now, do you see the beginning one? They're just squares and there's nothing inside of them. Can you see that these have lines that kind of go down the center like that? So it looks more like the grid paper. That's really important because at the intermediate level, they're gonna be um, focusing on um, area, okay? So their thinking questions are, if each of the small squares represents the area of one square inch, what is the total area of this net? And again, net is described down there. So they're gonna be counting each one of these little squares. So in this big square right here are four squares, one, two, three, four. So they can count them all, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and on and on and on, right? To find the total area of that net. Question two says, besides counting each square individually, is there a more efficient way to determine the answer to question number one? So yeah, they could count each one of them and that would get them there, right? But now let's let them think about, is there a better way, maybe more efficient way to do this? And one could be, well, they notice that there's four in every single one of these squares, right? So they could go, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, um, squares of four, they count by fours, four, eight, 12, 16, and so forth. They could do, well, there's two across here and eight up here. So two, so two groups of eight is 16, and then count these over here. So there's a variety of ways that they can do that to get them to think a little bit more efficiently instead of counting by ones. And then the challenge question for these guys is, can you write an equation that represents one of your strategies in question two? So um, one, one equation could be um, there are six of these squares with four in there, in them. They could do six times four, okay, equals 24. Um, they could do um, eight plus eight plus eight, okay, however they see it. There are many different ways to see this, right? However they see it, they can come up with an equation for that. And then they go ahead and they create theirs and then they stick theirs up on the collaborative space invader. And then at the advanced level, okay, if they're choosing, if you're choosing the one that already has the net made for them, okay, um, then these guys actually need to make their cube first, and then they answer their questions. And their questions are, if each of the small squares represents the area of one square inch, 
what is the total surface area of your cube? So kind of similar to the intermediate one, but now we're talking about surface area. So they would be adding, okay, what's the total surface area of your cube? Question two says, if a one inch by one inch by one inch cube represents a volume of one cubic inch, what is the total volume of your cube? So now we're getting into obviously volume and that's what these little guys are for. Okay. So they can actually physically use these to recreate that cube if they need it to figure out how many total cubes are going to end up in here. You can actually really just fit them in there um, as well. And the last question says, or it's actually the challenge, it says, can you write an equation to show how you determine the volume of your cube? So now we're getting into the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism. And the um, formula is the length times the width times the height, right? So then they would be doing length times width times height, or two times two times two to figure out how many, what their, what their volume is in cubic inches of their, um, of their cube. Now this is a, um, this is a cube, right, obviously. It's also a rectangular prism. And you know how we call squares, um, squares are rectangles, but they're a special kind of rectangle. And so we call it out and we name it a square. Same thing with cube. Cube is a rectangular prism, but it's a special rectangular prism because all the faces are made up of squares. So we have a special name for that. It's called a cube. So, um, so there you have it. It was a uh, super uh, fun um, activity. Um, and um, if you do it, I know that you will enjoy do it. I know that you will enjoy it as well. It was a super fun blast from the past. So have fun.